so what is PAC? Um, we are a not-for-profit volunteer board of directors. We're a panel of industry experts who recognize high quality providers, independent certification that uses testing from industry developed standards. Our mission is to bring independent testing and certification to an unregulated uh, industry. Professionals that pass stringent testing, they will get a three-year certification, which has to be renewed every three years through C CEUs. And we will have a CEU at the end of this uh, presentation as well. So our core values, humane pet care, compassionate care to all, attentive to security, safety, and well-being, uphold doing no harm, placing the welfare of the animals above all other business considerations and abide by the humane pet care statement, act with honesty, fairness, integrity, and provide services without any discrimination. The difference between us and a regular second party program. Uh, so second party programs is basically a course that you would take, you would take their test. A third party certification is, a, is awarded by a third party standard setting organization indicates competency, competency as measured against a defensible set of standards, usually by application or exam. And we have no relationship with um, any higher education or degree. And in order to take the exam, you typically have to have a uh, professional experience as well. So we do have three certification levels. We've got the certified professional animal care provider. We've got the manager level and the operator level. Why is PAC important for your business if you're a pet care professional? Um, most professions in any other industry require independent certification before they can even open the doors. Maintain your edge in an increasingly competitive market. Build employee confidence. Uh, recruit higher quality employees and build trust with your pet parents. Why is PAC important to you, the pet parents, which will have a lot of pet parents on this call today? Uh, the pet care industry has no standard regulate, uh, regulations or education required to even open a business. So we don't want you to be left to navigate the qualified from the substandard. So that certification is something that you can trust. It allows pet parents to identify the most qualified, knowledgeable and committed professionals to the care of their family members. So for professionals that are on or those that might be thinking about uh, getting PAC certified, we have one more exam coming up from November 4th to 18th. October 11th is our registration deadline. If you're thinking about maybe doing it in the future next year, uh, join our Facebook study group and I'll have that link provided for you in the uh, chat box as well. All right, so that's all I have. Thank you very much for sitting through that. My apologies that I didn't have it uh, correct at the beginning. I'm sorry that you could not see that. All right, so without further ado, thank you so much, Erica, for being here. And I'm going to send off the presentation to you and we're looking forward to it. Oh, I just wanted to mention too, if anybody has any questions, please add them to the chat box. I'll be monitoring the chat box. And at the very end, uh, Erica, I'll, I'll ask them one by one and Erica will be pleased to, to help us out with that. All right, thank you. Thank you, Jamie. And I'm so honored to be here and to talk about this important subject. Um, what I'm going to do today is share, um, I've got some photos I would like to show that share, you know, my experience with um, the human animal bond and why it's so important. And then also um, offering a lot of tools and tips and solutions uh, for pet parents that are either going to experience pet loss soon, maybe with anticipatory loss or are currently going through pet loss or maybe want to support someone that is. Um, and so that, you know, we understand and open up the conversation about pet loss grief. Great, so I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. Okay, so Wolfie's Wish. So just to qualify and tell you a little bit about myself, um, I've been a musician my entire year, my entire life, <laughs> not my entire year, my entire life. And you know, I developed Wolfie's Wish because there was a need. There's a need to open up the conversation about grief. So I consider myself a pretty um, fun, easygoing person. And yet when I was confronted with this acute loss and a lot of pain, I was really worried I was going to lose you know, the joy in my life and 
not recover from this. Um, and so my husband and I moved to Munich, Germany in the in March of 2020. Um, and then just a couple of weeks later, everything shut down. And I said, well, I'd really like to get a, you know, another pet. Um, we have one cat we brought with us here to Germany. And um, I was looking up some message boards and I, I heard about Wolfgang. Um, he had eye herpes. He was um, needing a lot of around the clock care. And uh, so we brought him into our home and he became my COVID companion. Um, there wasn't a lot to do in a foreign country, but we sat around and bonded. Um, and this is pretty much how I started every day. So, you know, the human animal bond is a very special bond. Um, there's really nothing like it. I have wonderful human relationships, but the relationship I developed with this cat was like none other I'd had before. Um, every He wanted to be part of everything, into everything, and uh, just wanted to show what a wacko this guy was. Um, this is him as a kitten. He was just fearless and into, into everything. But, you know, people have all kinds of pets, right? We have, um, we're so lucky to be able to have you know, birds, rabbits, horses, um, of course, dogs and and cats. And yet what I found is that the bond that we can develop with animals is really the same. And that's why it's so important that we talk about pet loss, grief and validate it. Um, this is from my Instagram post. Uh, I really wish there were billboards like this, right? I think that we need to get a message out to the world that it is never just a pet, right? These animals are now our family. Um, in just my lifetime, um, I remember that you know dogs were brought home for protection, um, most of the time left outside, and you know cats were were to eat mice in the barn. Um, now, you know that's that's a stretch, but we've invented cat litter to bring the cats inside. You know, there's been a huge change in the past couple of decades about how we treat our animals. And it's wonderful, it's beautiful. Um, so that human animal bond is really strong. And, you know, unlike, unlike with humans, you know, we see the whole life process um, from, from birth to death with an animal. And that's not something we really experience in any other way. And so this is a different type of relationship. Um, unfortunately, Wolfgang died suddenly and tragically uh, at just a year and a half old. And um, I was completely devastated. Um, I was in shock, I was in trauma. And I didn't know what to do with myself, but I knew I couldn't stay at home. So just to show you the, the intense grief I was in, I went and ran a marathon the next day. As you can see, I'm not running. <laughs> I ended up carrying my shoes and I finished a half marathon. But this is the this is the state that I was in, and I'd never experienced anything this intensely. And my husband, bless his heart, he did it with me. Um, you know, and I it was just I knew that I was going to need a lot of help. Okay, so the first thing that I looked at and tried to find to help me were a set of affirmation cards. It's something that I'm very familiar with. I love the concept. You read one a day or several at once, and it's just like nice little instructions or reminders. But unfortunately, I couldn't find any geared for pet loss specifically or really grief. And while there are a lot of books available, um, I didn't really know which ones to read. I didn't know if I had to read the whole thing to feel better. Um, I couldn't really concentrate, to be honest. I learned, and all of this was new to me, that pet loss grief affects your brain, affects your body. Um, and so I was really forced with looking at how am I gonna get that joy back? You know, I really want to find a way through this. And this is my wonderful mom, Bonnie. She's a co-founder of Wolfie's Wish. Um, I was lucky enough to speak with her every day during the pandemic. And she knew Wolfgang virtually, um, had never met him, but understood my pain and was someone I could lean on. Um, she's a, a serial cat owner herself. And, um, you know, she really encouraged me from the very moment to make my own 
affirmation cards. And um, I didn't want to, honestly. I said, mom, I'm grieving and I don't know how. But um, I ended up seeking a pet loss counselor to help me and guide me really on how I can heal. And this was, uh, I put this card in here. This is not one of mine, but what she told me was that emotions like fear, sadness, anger, yes, happiness, love, and calm are all normal, including grief. It's part of being human. And underneath all of that, in our sessions, she would tell me how normal I was when I really had, I really wanted someone to confirm that I had lost my mind. I felt like I was losing my mind. Um, And so when I started to understand that pet loss grief is not only common, it's not talked about. I have never met anybody that was suffering and dysfunctional from their pet loss grief. So I felt very alone and isolated and questioned my sanity. And that's when I said to my mom, you know what, if other people feel this way, you know, will you help me make these cards? Will you help me do something? And she said, absolutely. So thus began um, the the tools and practices that were helping me. Um, The first thing I did was write a love letter to Wolfgang. Um, I wanted to record all of the silly memories. I wanted to write down why he was so special to me, why he felt like a family member. Um, I wanted to write down and record that, you know, he wasn't like a normal cat. He would play fetch. He wanted to be in everything. And so these cards developed as a way to, you know, take baby steps and start working on that path to healing. And underneath all of that, it was all about staying positive and in gratitude. And I'll talk more about that um, in a minute. But it was really important for me to buoy myself with fond memories, joyful moments, and holding on to those to keep me from really sinking into my despair. So it didn't take very long for my friends and family to, um, you know, fundraise, help me fundraise and get the first printing done. This is um, me packing and assorting the first first uh, edition. And then later we created a second edition. Um, and I also had been journaling. And I want to talk a little bit about journaling and artwork. Um, it's a very private and personal thing. And I really say there's no wrong way to do it. And there's no wrong way to grieve. For me, um, it was my husband's birthday not long after, and I didn't want to go on vacation, but I found that pretending Wolfgang was with me really helped me, um, you know, and it and ended up being on one of the cards that, you know, our pets can be with us in spirit anywhere, anytime, and no one needs to know. But it's bringing a smile to my face now because it's it's it was so helpful to me to be on this vacation and imagine him like oh what would he be doing if he was on this tour with us what would he be doing if if you know he was at dinner with us um and these sort of things started to lift me up and keep me from sinking into my grief and so um i did these daily sketches ended up turning into a book called tales of spirit cat this is our first edition it has changed now a little bit um and so what this book guides people to do is to imagine um, whatever their pet was or is that they are doing things they've never been able to do before. So this is just an example of some of the tools and some of the things that we can do to help us through our grief. And I do want to uh, mention right now that I am not a, a pet loss counselor. Okay. I put people in touch with pet loss counselors. And so um I don't want to to take any responsibility of, of, you know, giving guidance. I don't do one-on-one, but um, I do have a resources page and I will talk about that a little bit too. So my mom and I took this book and our card decks um, to a trade show called Super Zoo. And it was really wonderful uh, experience because we were, we were validated in that these types of products are needed. This conversation is needed. Uh, we took home a, a best new category, a best new gift award um, from Super Zoo, which really gave us a lot of 
uh, confidence to keep going and to really develop more products and services um, and resources. And it was after that that I put together the website, wolfieswish.com. And the website is full of all, a variety of things. And I want to direct you to a uh, of this love letter template that I made and you can just go and sign up and, and download it. And it's a wonderful exercise and activity to do with children. Um, you can print it out and give it as a gift. And because writing was so important to me and recording the relationship and putting it away was so important to me, I wanted to offer that. Many people have different experiences and ways of learning. And so I'm trying to develop Wolfie's Wish to include that and variety of things. One of the one of the pages is devoted to a blog where I have guest writers come in and write about their specific topics um, that they are experts in. So we have pet loss counselors that come in and write for us. Um, authors will come in and write for us. And so you know this is. This is ongoing um, and we're keeping it updated. I know it says May 31st, 2023, but um, this is just one page on there. So I wanted to offer that as well. And then the resources page is growing, but as you can see, we have, um, I do have a list of books that I found were really helpful. The Pet Loss Companion was written by two Pet Loss Reef counselors that I know and respect. Um, there's a list of counselors. Um, there are line, uh, online support groups. So we have our own, which is Wolfie's Wish Pet Loss Support Group, which is administered by four professional bereavement counselors. Um, there's also Pet Cloud. There's a variety of additional Facebook groups. Um, so that's another tool or resource that's free you can send people to or join yourself. Um, some people are prefer uh, you know, audio. And so there is a, a huge list of podcasts now that have um, episodes devoted to pet loss and coping with pet loss, validating pet loss. Um, and then there are also videos. So I interview pet loss professionals, especially grief counselors, to break down that barrier so that people can get a sense of how that person um, treats their clients, how they approach grief. Um, because for me, you know, I didn't have all of these resources and tools and I didn't really know where to start. I wanted to find a counselor and I had to kind of go through the system of, you know, reading this person's bio and reaching out to them. So I'm trying to really pull a lot of these things in one place to eliminate that type of, that, that much effort. Um, as I, I mentioned, I was really disheveled. I had a hard time concentrating. Um, I learned that it's normal for my brain to just not function properly while processing grief and trauma. So that's why I've got um, the videos there. And then recently, I've decided to uh, continue uh, something that I put on hold, which is uh, becoming a clinical musician. This has become really important to me because music was so integral in my healing process that um, I've now created a healing music playlist, which is my music and other um, artists' music on YouTube that you can go and listen to for free. Um, and I am, I'll talk a little bit more about music later, but I just wanted to show what, what some of the resources are at Wolfie's Wish. And now into some coping and um, you know grief tips and tools and practices. Um, this is from my Instagram page where I like to post a lot of simple digestible things. And one of the things I found that was really helpful for me was just lighting a candle in honor of Wolfgang. Um, I've made it a suggestion that you can write your pet's name on a candle if you want to. There are a lot of websites and um, Etsy stores where you can make a custom label, but really it's just the, the practice of having a ritual and sitting quietly and honoring your friend. This is actually something I still do every day and I happen to have bought the same candle for the past two years. <laughs> so, um, and, and I have a friend, uh, Morgan, with Memory Flame Candle and she hand pours hers. Um, 
she's not, this is not a paid ad or anything, but it's just a, um, a ritual that you may find helpful, or it's also a great gift for someone to go and pick up the candle with a card and, you know, say, Hey, I support you. Um, you know, here's, here's a ritual that maybe you can start or find that's helpful. I did mention that there are a lot of books available and um, I'm not really endorsing any. I'm just giving some suggestions that this one happens to be Daily Meditations to Work Through Grief. Um, I think it was written for human loss, but really, you know, grief is grief. And so finding tools and books maybe that speak to you or someone you know um, is a really great suggestion. You know, the, the nice thing about a book is that you can use it when you want to. Um, it's never knocking on your door or, um, you know, expecting anything from you. Um, one that I came across that I really like is Griffin's Heart. This is a really special keepsake memoir journal. Um, this happens to be a video from my Instagram. And so it shows you, you can jump to a certain section. Um, you can actually put photos inside the book. It's got a pocket, uh, it's got journal prompts. So, you know, I love this. I've actually uh, met Reagan and she wrote this um, to honor her cat Griffin and, and make something that was really helpful for her. Um, this is also a book uh, by a friend of mine, Lisa. And Lisa writes about caring for her senior dog, Dakota and the process that was involved and the unexpected things that happened. And, you know, it was kind of, they got some bad news and then there's this long period. So I've learned a lot about anticipatory grief. And I feel like reading her book really helped me prepare myself for when my cats um, get older, um, but also help other people who, who may not know how to navigate, you know, a senior animal. So those are just a couple of examples. Um, the next slide is pretty silly. Um, <laughs> this is a donut wall. And I just want to give everybody permission to, you know, have some vices that that aren't going to kill you. <laughs> Basically, uh, for me, it's sugar. And, you know, I really gave myself permission when I was grieving to just eat whatever I want. It wasn't going to be a long-term thing. And maybe you have some dietary restrictions or you're, you're diabetic and, uh, you know, find another way to to comfort yourself. But for me, you know, I had to put this in there because it, I really did go through little Debbie fudge rounds, like there's no tomorrow. And I allowed myself that, you know, I don't actually drink alcohol or smoke or anything. So I, I needed something. And I just want to give you permission that, um, you know, if it's all right with your doctor, go ahead and have, you know, a steak or mashed potatoes, or we actually had a Thanksgiving in October because it was going to be so comforting for me. Um, okay. And so now I want to talk about the cards and give you some of the uh, ideas and we can talk a little bit about this afterwards, but this one is, I loved my pet with all my heart. The amount of pain I feel is equal to the love I gave. And this is one of the, um, this is a, a user photo that they sent me from, from Instagram. And I just want to talk about this a little bit because you know, having something to focus on every day was really important for me. I really needed simple, digestible things. And as I mentioned, and I'm sure some of you can relate to that, you know, this, 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 this pain is different, but this idea, the amount of pain I feel is equal to the love I gave, allowed me and gave myself permission to really sink into that and go, oh, I'm normal. This is Okay. This makes sense because so much of grief doesn't make sense and is unexpected. And I want to talk about guilt for just a second. Um, from, from my own experience and from many people I've talked to, guilt is a huge part of the grieving process. And I was aware that it wasn't really helping anything. I was aware that it was only hurting me and I really didn't want to hang on or focus on things that were hurting me or not helpful. And so this is really based on um, Louise Hay and her principles. If you're not familiar with her, she's an, art, um, an author and founded Hay House Publications. 
that also that also makes um, affirmation cards. And she talks a lot about in her books and her talks um, about how how unhealthy and how useless guilt is. And so I add in this card that, you know, maybe I can't wish it away and I can't snap my fingers, but I can work towards letting go of that, that burden, the coulda, shoulda, woulda. And the actual reverse of this card says, I did the best I could with what I had, you know, and that's enough. And it's really true that if we're loving our, if we love our animals and we're hurting, you know, we did the best we could, no matter what the outcome is, how they pass, you know, we are giving them so much and it's never perfect and that's okay. This is another one of the cards that I'm always connected in spirit to my pet. And this is actually an illustrated deck that I made with um, an artist. And so we included illustrations of dogs, cats, birds, rabbits, guinea pigs, and horses, and also male, female, um, children, and adults. So it's a little bit more universal, whereas the, the Paul Prince version is really just text. So you can focus on the words. Um, so just wanted to give a, an example of that. And this really ties on to that book idea of, you know, wherever I go, my pet is in my heart. I will never lose that, you know, I, and even in moments of pain, I can put my hand on my heart. Um, I still sometimes wake up in the middle of the night and think, did all of that really happen? Did Wolfgang really die suddenly and tragically? And um, I put my, my hand on my heart and I take a deep breath and I just say, you know, I'm safe. He's here in my heart. And um, then I could go back to sleep. Okay, I'm going to skip the next one because it's just um, nature sounds a nice waterfall, but I want to talk about spending time in nature and self-care and how important that is. I just have some water. I found that, you know, eliminating a lot of distractions from my life and allowing myself time to grieve was really important. And so one of the cards, it talks about spending time in nature and setting aside time for that. Um, just the color green is calming in itself. A lot of um, TV networks have green rooms where the guests go before the show. Um, so there's a lot, a lot we can pull from nature and even just the sounds and the stillness um, can be very restorative. So whether you walk in a park or you go on a hike, um, I really incorporate I still do that as part of my self-care is making sure I spend time in nature. This was actually just this past weekend here in Bavaria. It's, it's am amazingly beautiful. Um, and a lot of, a lot of parks and lakes and things like that. So I always make sure to, to get out of the city and go there. Um, next, I want to talk about uh, one of the, one of my friends on Instagram, her name is Beth Bigler. And she actually uh, was my personal counselor for a while. Um, she, is wonderful and that she also offers daily tips um, and tools to to talk about and and get through your grief and so instagram is a great place to go if you like instagram to follow you know anybody with the with the hashtag pet loss or pet loss support um, there's a lot of great accounts on there and i will uh, mention a few of those in just a minute but Beth made, made a suggestion once that I, uh, or a couple of things that I incorporated, and that was to, you know, use Wolfgang's name. You know, here I am at the beach uh, in Florida, wrote his name in the sand and honored him in that way. And it's really simple thing. So that makes such a difference and make us feel connected to our pet. Um, she also suggested the next time you go get a coffee at Starbucks to use your pet's name instead of your name. And I tried it and she was right. It brought an instant smile to my face to just hear someone else say Wolfgang's name. It's like, oh, he's not forgotten. You know, that person doesn't need to know. I mean, it's kind of funny because I'm a girl and a Wolfgang, but they didn't say anything about it. And it was just, uh, just so many great resources and tools and people have such great ideas. And even in some of the um, Facebook groups, um, just users talking to one another and supporting one another can come up with things like this. And I really think the more the merrier. Um, but I do want to emphasize to find the solution and tools that will work for you. 
since grief is such a personal thing, I'm just giving you kind of a broad overview of some of the areas where you can tap into. Um, another one of Beth's ideas was to use color and um, often she's wearing orange. Her cat, Arnie, was orange. Um, and so here I have neon toes. And no, Wolfgang was not neon, but just to give a funny example, um, you know, I was imagining him in the nail salon. Okay, what color would he get? He would definitely get neon green. So it's a personal connection that, you know, I'm sharing with you guys because I want you to know how simple these little things can be to work through grief and to honor our animals. Um, so yeah, neon green is never a color that I would pick, but I do it and I smile um, when when I see it because I think of him and and that's just his personality. He's just, just such a crazy cat. And okay, pet adoption. So this is a topic in one of the blogs. This comes up a lot on um, message forums. It's like, when do I get another animal? Do I get another animal? How do I know when it's the right time? And I just want to say that only you can answer that, but it is okay to open up your heart again. This is Millie and Vanilli, and I adopted them um, from a shelter, I think three months. It was actually, yeah, Christmas Day, 2021. Um, they are sisters from Turkey and have just really, it's a different bond, but it is so special again. Um, and so that, and that's Peachy, our cat that we brought from America. So Vanilli quickly came, quickly became our chief feline officer and covered everything in her beautiful white hair. Um, so it is okay to get another pet. You know, your, your pet wants you to be happy and to do the things that make you happy and bring you joy. And it doesn't mean that I've forgotten Wolfgang at all, but I get to enjoy, um, a companion again. Um, again, back to Instagram, Westy Taps is an account that reached out to me to help me with the translation of my cards into German. I was doing kind of a bad job with that and she saw it and reached out to me. Um, and this is Saskia. Salski and I have continued to work together and she's actually changing her whole life path to become a pet loss counselor. So she's actually one of the administers or administrators in our pet loss support group um, and just a wonderful human being. Speaking of other um, accounts on Instagram, some that I love are pet loss psychologist, which is Dr. Katie Lawler, um, Rainbow Bridge Raina, can record a video and send it to someone on your behalf as a gift. And you just have to look her up to see what that's about. It's it's beautiful. Pet Loss Therapist, um, Pet Eden is Tracy Woods in Australia. Um, and Pet Cloud Pet is um, Kevin Ringstaff and he's in the United States and runs Pet Cloud, which is a wonderful company and on our resources page as well. For those of you that are audio, um, learners or just like to you know go on a walk or on your drive i have participated in podcasts and just so you know i always try to offer these types of tools and solutions share knowledge so maybe you want to check out some of the uh, podcasts but again there's so many based on uh, pet loss now that you you should be able to find something that that speaks to you this next one is about um pet memorials and pet anniversaries um, Nine Tabbies is an account that um, I follow and have become friends with. And um, you know, Linus, this this is just to show how deep the the relationship is with our pets. That they are honoring Linus. Um, this would have been his twentieth birthday, and I think that pet anniversaries are so important to be shared and to to honor because that day can be very painful, and it was for me that. I now go online and have um, community, you know, and I, I share people, oh, this day is coming up and I'm feeling this way, you know, and it's important to talk about it with people that understand. So that can be through, um, you know, in-person support groups in your community or, um, or virtually. And then some of the other things that I've put together um, include a YouTube channel for Wolfie's Wish where I interview pet loss experts, um, in-home euthanasia, veterinarians, um, and just kind of give everybody a little overview of, you know, a lot of the other content just in a different format. So that might be of interest. And then I talked a little bit about music. So this is the playlist on YouTube. 
where it's um, healing harp music and you can just kind of click play and tune out. Um, Lisa Lynn is a friend of mine in California and she actually has a lot of um, CDs and recordings that have helped people um, through grief and trauma. So I've carefully curated this list and, um, you know, so it's, it's a very personal thing to me, especially being a harpist and moving towards um, clinical musician training. Uh, I really want to bring that and incorporate it and, and find a way to, to help people heal through music. And then back to these, you know, memorials and anniversaries, um, what I've started doing every month is having a tribute to animals that have passed or crossed the Rainbow Bridge, if you like. And so I do this live on Instagram um, and I, of course, announce it. So if any of you are interested or want to refer this as something um, for someone, what they do is they write their pet's name in the comments while I'm playing or afterwards on the replay if they miss it. Um, and this has been a really wonderful uh, community building um, experience for me and very meaningful, um, both for my own healing journey, but to bring something that I've done and, and know so well to be able to, to help other people too. And, um, you know, we aren't the only ones that respond to music. And that's actually another part of my training I'm looking at is how can I help animals that are in palliative care, end of life care, you know, can I help them with their anxiety as well? So I just wanted to add that, that this is my friend's dog, um, Levi, who every time I'm visiting her um, and I and I play harp, he comes in and sleeps right next to the harp, which I find really fascinating and I'm interested in knowing more about. But it just shows that, you know, music really affects more than just um, just us. You know, I think that we're not the only ones to enjoy it. So I'm anxious and excited to continue that practice. And I'll see Levi next week as well um, when I go on a conference tour in the United States. And so uh, this next picture is just, again, this is my favorite picture of myself and Wolfgang, um, you know, showing that animal bond and how deep that is. And, you know, I love that I can have these pictures printed out um, put on an Instagram page, saved in a photo album. So I really encourage you to collect pictures of you and your pets or even for your friends and have them in places where they can, they can look at them and smile and remember how special that is. And I'm gonna stop sharing here. And I want to actually go over and give you guys a little um, gift. I would love to have you have some samples of these cards to print out at home. Um, maybe you want to share them with someone and maybe you don't need them today, but I would love for you to have them to print out when you need them. And this is something I just created. Um, I will drop the link into the chat. And also uh, Jamie said she can follow up and send it in an email as well. But I just want to show you how that works. Go back to share screen. And I have this pulled up in my browser. So the link just takes you to a page like this. You fill in your name, your email, and then um, a PDF is sent to you that looks like this. And so just print it at home or even um, at Kinko's on some nice photo paper, and then you can cut them out. So these are my five favorite cards to just kind of, again, take those baby steps in starting to process the grief and work on the grief and start that journey of healing. Um, so I just want to thank everybody for, for watching and listening today and for being here to support yourself and also your friends, family, your community, and pet loss grief. And I'm hoping that by having educational sessions like this, we can really open up the conversation around pet loss grief and make it as valid as any other grief. You know, loss is loss. And we can't let the non-pet owners tell us how to grieve anymore. You know, I'd really love to see us having time, paid time off of work, um, more support in the community, and to acknowledge our pets as family members, because that's exactly what they are. So I hope that you will share Wolfie's Wish and any of the resources that you found helpful today. Um, and thank you all for your time and attention. And Jamie is going to now open up um, and let me know if there's any questions that you guys have. 
Um, but really, I would love for you to reach out to me and let me know how I can make Wolfie's Wish better. And um, thank you so much. That's awesome. Thank you so much. Um, what I loved about that, uh, your comment of, you know, open your heart up to another if you're ready. And you'll know when you're ready for that. Um, but I think we we do, we get into that little mindset of, well, I, I can't, you know, I, I'm not honoring my past pet if I get another one and never you're you're never trading in and you're never replacing your you're just simply opening your heart to another another love and another joy um, along with that comes another loss at some point but absolutely it's um it's a it's a cycle that we get into but it's a cycle that it's so worth it um when you live in that dash and and you get all those memories um I don't have any questions in the in the chat box at this at this time but if anybody has a story that you'd like to share um please feel free because we're all here to support each other in the idea of you know pet loss and grieving and knowing that it's okay to do that that it's normal to do that so i love that you brought mm -hmm. that up uh thank you for all the resources that you um posted and and like erica said uh, we will actually send out an email to the registrants with all of the links and her slides um so that you can kind of review and look at um felicia here um please feel free to unmute yourself and if you have a question hi um yeah i just uh I had a comment. Um, my loss was fairly recently, so I'm sorry if I'm crying. But um, one thing I really appreciated hearing was, um, you know, that how uh, how you walked around like in a brain frog. And I've been, I mean, I've honestly thought that I was like starting to get like some early onset of some memory problems because I've been just so out of it mentally I work at a hospital and and um I just been forgetful and but it's good to hear that it's you know you know because most likely because of my grief I've I never realized that um you know this could be <laughs> so hard you know but um it's just helped to hear that you know that uh that it's natural to feel the feels and walk around in this total fog and then also you know that to really witness his entire life his short life as it was but um you know also helps put things in perspective and um you know I just really appreciate you know being invited to this so thank you so much thank you for well, being Felicia I'm glad yeah, I'm so glad you're here and that you're opening up and at least talking to us. I know we're a bunch of strangers, but I'm sorry for your loss. And, you know, I too, I would leave the faucet on in the kitchen and then come back in and think, what's wrong with me? So there's a lot of symptoms of grief that we don't expect. And the best thing that I can say is to be kind to yourself, be gentle with yourself. But if you are concerned or you do need some support, it's a great idea to join a, a virtual support group. There's a lot of free ones um, or maybe re reaching out to a counselor. And those are those are for you to decide. But um, I do hope that you that you take care of yourself during this really hard time. And we are here to support you as well. So at any time we can help, we can uh, send some resources. I did post um, Erica's five ways to honor your pet. Uh, that might also help in the grieving process as well. Again, all these things we think sometimes are silly or not normal, and they are so normal, so very normal. So thank you for sharing that. Uh, Amy, go ahead. Hey, guys. Sorry, I'm in the car right now, so my camera's off. But I just wanted to say thank you for having this conversation and for bringing you know, this topic and these feelings to light, because I think it's just, you know, you kind of mentioned this, it's just not something that non-pet owners really recognize or understand, and they they can't, I mean, it's not their fault, but, you know, yeah. I recently, we lost a dog last week, and then we lost another one of our dogs about two months ago, and so it's been a difficult few months, and, you know, you forget that it's, that you're grieving. And so those, those things like that brain fog and the, 
know, the feelings of depression or not wanting to do anything. There's been a lot of days where I just, I don't even want to get up and do anything. I just want to, you know, lay in bed or just, you know, sit in my chair and watch bad reality TV all day or something. And, you know, I'm like, why am I feeling like this? And I'm like, oh yeah, because I've just suffered this loss. And it's just, and then I find myself, you know, trying to minimize it almost because I don't want other people mm -hmm. to feel uncomfortable. And these are just mm -hmm. all things that it should, it just needs to be acknowledged as a regular grieving process yeah. because it is we're we're grieving the loss of a family member and it, it should be viewed as that and so I just wanted to say thank you so much and I've got your affirmation cards and I you know I have them up in my bathroom mirror so I can look at one each day and it just gives me a place to land and to kind of touch base with that just to say okay you know I'm acknowledging this I'm recognizing it and that now I'm going to go on about my day but I've taken a moment you know even just while I'm brushing my teeth to to kind of, you know, be in that place for a moment. So I didn't, I don't want to go on and on, but I just wanted to say thank you for having this conversation and for raising awareness about it. Thank you, Amy. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're here. <laughs> well, and I think too, that we forget um, about the idea that, especially if you have a pet and Felicia, I don't know your story or anybody else who's on the call right now, you know, I don't know what you've gone through, but I've had pets in the past where, you know, as they're aging out or they've had a medical condition and you're giving around the clock care to these animals, you know, just the same as if you were giving around the clock care to your parents or, you know, a spouse or a loved one or a family member or a friend, uh, when, when that's gone and that routine changes and you no longer have to give and provide that care it is a massive hole that you're left with that like how do I fill that time that was so dedicated right so mm -hmm. sorry I don't want to cry either oh, that was no plan. crying to cry. <laughs> no but, can I just uh, say <laughs> crying is so important and I call them cry storms I still get them but just like when you're in the ocean, you, you want to go underneath and surrender to it, right? Rather than fight it. And so I encourage people to cry. My affirmation cards will make you cry. Um, so just give yourself the space to do that. And, you know, if you have to excuse yourself to the restroom at work or in a social setting, it's okay. But you got to, that's part of your healing is crying. And it's going to happen for me for the rest of my life, you know? So yeah, absolutely. I think we can feel that compassion to everybody who's gone through it. So my yeah. heart goes out to you, Amy and Felicia, and everybody else who has lost one recently. Uh, anyways, um, any other questions? Or well, Saskia actually has been uh, adding a few comments, and she says grief can definitely cause issues with memory, concentration, productivity. You're not alone. We are not alone, right? Um, and then she says uh, that caring is sharing, and it also applies to crying. So thank you. Yeah. And I just want to comment on, you know, the senior care of animals and around the clock care. And, um, you know, a lot of people have told me that when that's over, they feel very confused because they're relieved, but they also feel guilty and they're going through the loss. So grief can be very complicated. Um, and, but I really want everyone to know what I've learned by speaking with other professionals and other grievers is that it's all normal. And there's really no linear way to grieve. It's unpredictable, but you haven't lost your sanity. And, and, you know, that's why I think support and getting support from people in your family and community that you know and trust is really important to, to help you. Because, you know, for me, I didn't understand what was going on. And so how could I expect my friends to understand what was going on? And so that's why I found like Facebook support groups, for example, were so great because I can just post something even anonymously and get so much support back, hundreds of comments. You're not alone. I understand. I relate. <sighs> and what's nice about the Facebook, especially using your phone is when you're done, you can just put your phone down. You know, if you want to end that conversation or you need to come back to it later. So really just asking yourself, okay, what what extra support do I need and, and how do I get it is really the first place to start. And, um, you know, from there, just take baby steps and be kind to yourself. This is a very, very difficult thing to go through. And, um, it takes time, it takes a long time. 
um, I showed a couple of pictures in there of some of the artwork that I started doing. That was my COVID hobby. I didn't want to do art for months. I didn't want to go to a museum for months. I lost interest in everything and I isolated, but I allowed myself that. I said, that's what I'm doing right now. Just like with those fudge rounds, this is just for right now. In a few months, let's, let's reevaluate and see where things are at. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing that, everyone. And thank you, Erica. This was a, a great way to get some resources, get some ideas. Um, and uh, I don't see any, any other questions or comments. So with that, I'm going to, unless anybody else has anything to add, I'm going to stop the recording. And if we do have any pet professionals uh, on the call, I, I will give out the CEU code after the recording has stopped. So I'll just wait a minute and see if anybody has anything else to add. But this was a, a great conversation. Um, I've added some links, like, like I said, to the chat box, if you're able to get them. And then we will send out an email with all the links and the slides. Uh, thanks to Erica. Thank you for providing that for us so that you Absolutely. can actually go through. And, and I've uh, posted your website as well. So go through the blogs. There's, Thank you. I was looking through that earlier uh, in the week and such fabulous things to, to learn from. So I'm going to stop the recording now and then I'm going to um, give out the CEU code.